Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today on the channel, we've got Joshua Daniel. So, I haven't watched this video before, I see that it's about fiber. Increase fiber, decrease ingredients. Ready to know where he's going with this, but we're gonna jump right into this. But first, please subscribe to the Patreon. It's only one dollar a month, and you get exclusive content. One dollar a month, you get three videos a week instead of two, and they are one week early uploads as well. Five dollars a month, you get access to three videos per week, one week early, just like the one dollar month here. But you also get ad-free content, uncensored content, and you get access to the references that I cite on screen. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Anyway, with that being said, now let's get on to the video. You want some immediate shifts in your mental health? Number one is going to be increasing the amount of dietary fiber. No, Jesus. absolutely not. In fact, actually, it's funny, I wrote about this in my book, Contraindicated. The fact that actually whenever observing microbiome alterations, let's say, that aren't directly causally linked to fiber intake or a decrease in fiber intake, but is associative still pretty strongly, that eating more fat and saturated fat, animal protein, and decreasing the amount of fiber commensurately, because that's usually a necessary consequence of doing all those things, in the study at least, was associated with a decrease increase in many manifestations of mental illness. I think what you're saying is usually people that increase dietary fiber are increasing their consumption of other plant foods like fruit and vegetables and all that stuff, and they're decreasing the amount of ultra-processed junk like Twinkies and Ding Dongs and Hot Cheetos, which of course that's going to result in better mental health, almost unequivocally. But no, fiber itself, that's reductionist to say that, that it's due to fiber itself. Fiber, we'll get into fiber later, because there are a myriad of problems with fiber, and I've said them incessantly, that it's very trite on my channel. The concept consequences of fiber. But anyway, we'll get to that. Available source is going to be beans coming in at nine grams of fiber per... Yeah, not good. Sorry. Fiber is a contraindication of the human diet. It is abrasive to the enteric nervous system. It upregulates immune dysregulation and therefore, consequently, subsequently, mucus secretion. It is a problem. The reason we need to increase our fiber intake is due to the... No, we, there, there is no reason why we need to do that. I've already covered. We don't want to either. But I'll cover it in more detail very soon. Of our brain-derived neurotrophin factor lowering in the presence of too much sugar. Association. Whatever you just said, association. And also, that was meretricious terminology, that was bombastic terminology in order to aggrandize yourself, once again in the perception of other impressionable people. It doesn't matter what you said. Association. Because there's no causal evidence, especially with the science that you're referring to. We all know what science you're referring to. It's human nutrition science, which isn't science, it's theology. It's all it is. Human nutrition science is bred in circuses from the mainstream medical establishment with the intended audience being we the people. And you have fallen for it. Like dogs to a bone, we fall for it. Not me, though. And not judicial perspicacious people. We know how fraudulent it is, not to mention the conflict of interest involved with a lot of that stuff. Especially fiber, Kellogg's maybe, perhaps. IGF-1, body grow, brain slow. So what does that mean? Insulin-like growth factor one, yes. What about it? That's not a bad thing. If he starts espousing the IGF-1 mTOR nonsense, I'm, I haven't talked about that on my channel, but I can. If he brings it up, I will. Across something like this with zero grams of dietary fiber, we're not going to consume. Or when you come across... Well, that's that's contraindicated for other reasons, too, though. Actually, the, it's better that it doesn't have fiber. It would be worse if it had fiber in it. But once again, do you see what he's doing? He's pointing to Dr. Pepper and Cheetos. Well, of course that's not going to be good for your mental health. It's not going to be conducive to a salubrious mental manifestation of health, let's say. <laughs> That's not debatable. That's uh, that's unambiguous. We know this. But to reduce the reasoning as to why to fiber? Nonsense. Facile. By definition, that is facile. Cheetos and Dr. Pepper are worse than the beans that you showed earlier. No one's really debating that. But it's not because of their fiber content. Things like this that have actual ingredients that cause disruption in your gut microbiome, we don't consider. Well, that's an opinion. There's no evidence of that technically, but my opinion is also concurring of that. I'm corroborating. There is no technical definite evidence of that. So now by consuming fiber and single ingredient foods, we're helping our gut re-inoculate itself, which your belly is your brain. Okay, once again, reductionism, and I do tend to agree with you when you say that if you switch out those foods for the foods that you just listed earlier, or really the one that you presented earlier, the one singular one that you presented earlier, will help make you feel better. But it's not due to fiber. I'm sorry. Fiber is a contraindication in the human diet once again. There are only two associative factors when it comes to diverticulosis, which is an outpouching or breaking down of the distal colon, which will lead to infection and early death if left untreated, trends towards diverticulitis, which is increased fiber intake and increased number of bowel motions per day. There was only one study, one, and I'm 
mean it when I say one singular study that even remotely attempted to control for confounding variables, which they failed to do because all studies do inherently as a consequence of them being intrinsically associative. You cannot control for human beings. But it was the closest they ever got. It was published in the Journal of Gastroenterology in 2012. I think it was N of 63. 63 people presented with idiopathic constipation, and they were split into three groups. One group maintained their fiber intake, one group slightly reduced it, and another group completely eliminated fiber from their diet. The only group to see a complete amelioration of their constipation symptoms, which were not only characterized by blocking, but also characterized by anal bleeding and bloating, invariably was the group that eliminated fiber from their diet. Fiber ferments into nasty byproducts like aldehydes. It ferments into gluconeogenic precursors, particularly lactate and acetate, which, once again, gluconeogenic precursor means that they're compounds that can be used through the gluconeogenic pathway in the liver to be converted into glucose, thus raising one's glucose levels indirectly, even though they didn't actually consume glucose, hence indirectly raising it. It does tend to ferment into short-chain fatty acids. It does absolutely ferment into short-chain fatty acids, particularly butyrate, though. And beta-hydroxybutyrate is one of the main ketone bodies that is produced in a systemically ketogenic state, which can be achieved and is achieved eating a species-appropriate, species-specific diet of 100% carnivore. Joshua, sorry, we're done with this. I can go further into fiber as well if it becomes salient. And then just walk around the grocery store and look at what everybody else is buying. So if you're just starting out, grab some rice, grab some beans. Maybe. Don't do that. Rice, carbohydrates, carbohydrates are mainly glucose in those foods right there. And glucose is a six carbon aldehyde. It's called an aldohexose. And aldehydes, even in vastly small concentrations, destroy lipid rafts, tear cell membranes to pieces, bind to DNA to promote carcinogenesis by causing mutations to it, and in a high enough concentration, but still relatively low, kill cells outright. We create all the carbohydrates we need as a human being and as a member of the human species via gluconeogenesis, a process that we have for a reason. We evolved to have that. The reason that we have the system is because of the fact the absolute unequivocal fact, as of 2019, it's unequivocal, definitely, it is no longer inferential, that we evolved eating primarily fat as our main derivative of fuel, animal fat, not glucose. That's why there's a reason for us to have that system. Lentils. Get yourself some tomatoes. Don't do that. Tomatoes are part of the nightshade family, and nightshades are replete with an exorbitant amount of glycoalkaloids, which are neurotoxins, as they block out the enzyme cholinesterase, which is responsible for breaking down acetylcholine. And acetylcholine concentrations, if risen too high in muscle cells of the predator that consumes the compound within this plant, let's say tomatoes, overstimulates the muscles of said predator to the point of paralysis, convulsions, respiratory arrests, and consequently early death. They're also shown to promote birth defects in lab laboratory animals and survive most types of cooking and processing. They also are replete with many lectins as well. Don't eat those. Without the citric acid. The reason I make- Well, citric acid, that's not important. Suggestion to avoid citric acid is on food sensitivity testing. We see it show up on almost every single person. Never well, actually, the citric acid you're referring to is lab-made citric acid because 99%, that's an actual statistic, 99% of citric acid that is contained within foods as an ingredient is made in a laboratory through the fermentation of black mold, aspergillus niger. That's why it stimulates people's food sensitivities. That's why. There you go. Telling you is going to take a little bit of extra time. Like, this is black beans right here, but this is also $2.48. Yeah, don't eat those. Toxic. Did I mention that fiber actually inhibits nutrient absorption as well? It's one of the main reasons it was advertised in the 1980s. It was advertised for weight loss because they said explicitly that because of the fact that it inhibits nutrient absorption, you'd be absorbing less of your food, thus causing weight loss. Oh my gosh, how inane can you get? Only for two servings. So if you're going for convenience, it's going to be very hard to consume nutritious food and enough of Well, that's not nutritious, is it? What's nutritious is meat and animal fat, saturated fat, the stuff solid room temperature, straight hydrocarbon chains, biochemically speaking, in the forms of butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee. That's nutritious, not that. Because the foods that I just enumerated and listed off are bereft and destitute of toxins. Because you can just buy an onion, sea salt, avocado oil, and beans and have 50 servings of this. All of those are plants, and plants are not food for human beings. They never have been and they never will be. We've been eating plants for 13,000 years of our existence. As an overestimate, actually, because that's when the agricultural revolution was overestimated to have started. In any significant amount, that's how long we've been eating it. Before that, only 20% of our diet seemed to have consisted of plants, and it was particularly two kinds. One kind, actually, specifically, in particular, which was basically large fibrous tubers in the form of sweet potato before we hybridized it to be starchy and loaded with carbohydrate content. And we eat those inferentially speaking, during times of unsuccessful hunting. We didn't want to eat them, and we had to prepare them pretty well beforehand. The other food that I was referring to was fruit in the ever-ephemeral, ever-transient fruit season, which is also far, far, far more sugary and starchy, let's say, depending on if you're talking about a banana, for example, than other fruits even just a hundred years ago, let alone millions of years ago. So, for instance, where I'm standing right now, candy, trash for your gut health and your mental health,
okay, I'm not really opposed to that opinion. I think that's a pretty judicious opinion. The problem is reducing the reasoning to fiber. There are a myriad of other things that are different between a Reese's cup and ruminant animal meat. Or in this case, what you're referencing, beans. <sighs> All of these massive ingredient foods, trash for your gut health and your mental health. So the preface of- Okay, I'm not opposed to that, but once again, fiber should not be the reductionary compound that one derives. This is ridiculous. Thing, regardless of what you're consuming, you need to just focus on decreasing ingredients first. Now, some indicators if you're eating the wrong- I'm not necessarily opposed to that, but that's not the rule of thumb that one should actually adopt at all, really. It should be different. It should be, we should be eating a species-appropriate, species-specific diet for our species. That being 100% carnivore, consisting primarily of the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals, with added fat in the forms of butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee, the stuff solid room temperatures, straight hydrocarbon chains, biochemically speaking, added salt to taste and water, as established unequivocally by stable nitrogen and carbon an isotope analysis conducted in 2019 on the collagen of the long bones of ancient human remains. That's it. In your throat, that phlegm that builds up? After yeah, that's due to mucus secretion. Guess what increases mucus secretion, Joshua? Fiber. Eat? Not normal, not good. Have yeah, not normal at all. And guess what is a very auspicious approach to achieving that? Oh yeah, consuming fiber. Fiber is not digestible. We can't digest it. Last I checked, if we can't digest something, we shouldn't f be eating it avoid trash like literally a okay this is actually silly yes you shouldn't eat Reese's Puffs and beans are better than Reese's Puffs it's not because of the fiber <laughs> wow I mean Josh why do you think we have an appendix now that is so shrunken from its previous form from millions of years ago that being an entire cecum a cecum being an organ designed to pack in fiber and ferment it into short chain fatty acids why do you think it shrunk to the size it is now to a vestigial organ of no utility it's because we weren't eating fiber evolutionary behavior and rules let's say make it to where the appendix will never completely disappear because traits are selected against we eliminate certain traits of our body if they actually prove to be deleterious to an organism or to the organism or interfere with the survival of that organism in some way the appendix hasn't done that so it will never go away completely but it can atrophy, which is exactly what has happened due to it not being used. Come on. Bag of trash. So here's a more expensive option. So you can choose this as an option, but you're getting 67 grams of carbohydrates in one gram of dietary fiber. 67 grams of carbs. Toxic. One gram of fiber. That's better. If it were 30 grams of fiber, I'd be even more concerned. A fiber carbohydrate bomb. Yikes. <sighs> or you can get... 21 grams of carbohydrates and 11 grams of dietary fiber. Well, 21 grams of carbohydrates in a serving is still vastly, it's, it's exorbitant and insalubrious. A uh, good book, maybe Taste of Kills, Microbiome Diet, Mind Gut Connection. So the most important- No, I've heard those titles before. They're based on vapid epidemiology. There are seven flaws of epidemiology I can think of right now. We'll get into that later, perhaps. Step is to decreasing the ingredients you're consuming to gag up vegetables in a sink when I first started. No, eating. see, this is why it's not a good rule of thumb to follow that because that will still lead you to eating inappropriate foods for your physiology as a human being, like vegetables and fruits. I mean, last I checked, we're apex predators, correct? And if you look at an energy food pyramid or an energy pyramid, really, carnivores are at the top and omnivores are in the middle. So, how the f would we be apex predators and omnivores? Common sense is not so common anymore, is it? But I assure you, about one to two weeks into this, you're going to feel so different. Your blood sugar will be more under control. Not, which... not necessarily, actually, Joshua. Especially if you're eating carbohydrates. Fiber does have the propensity to blunt the degree to which your glucose will rise after consuming carbohydrates. Sure. But that's a, still a double whammy because you're still getting a carbohydrate load that is supply-driven. And you're still disrupting your gut microbiome and your gut status or health due to the consumption of such an abrasive substance. Make your anxiety more under control. Soda. No, not necessarily. Why are you saying that? That is really irresponsible of you. To say absolutes like will be. No, you shouldn't do that. Sure, gut health and is one of the main contributors to too much sugar consumption. Oh, yeah, yeah and what are carbohydrates, Joshua? What do they all break down to? Sugar? Hmm. I'm not denying that people are going to feel better by eating the stuff that you just pointed to as opposed to the stuff that you're pointing to now. I know that. That's totally fine. I wonder how Starbucks is able to put milk and leave it at room temperature? Gross. So you can no longer consume name brand food. Because we need to ask yourself, why does the same ingredient, which right here, high fructose corn syrup, 
which is constituted around 46% glucose and 54% fructose, as opposed to sucrose, which is 50% and 50% of both glucose and fructose. Not really that much of a difference. It's just higher in fructose. It's not actually high fructose, really. It's just sugar. And guess what? What do carbohydrates break down to? Not really fructose, but they still break down into glucose, which is still a problem. And if you're going to tell people to eat fruit, which is what you pointed to earlier, that has even more fructose than high fructose corn syrup. Did you know that, Joshua? Why is it in a breakfast sandwich? Why is it also in... Well, I mean, why do people eat pancakes for breakfast? That's not only exclusive to these packaged, ultra-processed foods, Joshua. Whipped cream. We already know it's in Pepsi. Right there. It's in these fruit drinks. Right there. It's also in your cookies. And unfortunately... Okay, what is the point of this? I'm about to stop reacting. What is your point? Yeah, these are unhealthy foods. Great. Beans are healthier than that. I mean, that's a step up. But you know, I can tell you just anecdotally, which to people that are against me ideologically, it's not going to mean anything to them because anecdotes don't really mean anything. But for the people that actually care, anecdotally, I was eating predominantly plants. The only meat I was eating was chicken breast. So it was still low fat. And uh, I did horrendously. At one point, I was emaciated when I did a plant-based diet in a Dr. Gundry style way. But before that, I was still not feeling well. Autoimmune attacks, like muscle spasming and twitching all over my body all the time. Painful, stinging, burning nerve pain. Bad. Looking around, you see some really unhealthy kids drinking it. Try to remember these two statements. Wake up, don't eat, let your glycogen deplete. Because if you- Wake up, don't eat, let your glycogen deplete. Okay, I mean, you're just talking about fasting. Fasting, okay. Your gut, you keep your mind. Because when I started all this, I was in a very bad place financially and I would actually eat every other day to save money. If you want some unsolicited advice on what I did, is I cut out all the bad ingredients, and then I started eating- No, you, you didn't cut out all the bad ingredients, because you introduced fiber, which is once again a contraindication in the human diet. Other day, single ingredient foods only. Like your cookies and all this stuff, you can't eat that anymore. It's just crap for your gut. Here were some of my meals starting out. Uh, I would go for salmon. I don't think they have it here, but I started cooking with coconut oil. Shifted from my Jif peanut butter. It's actually more saturated than most animal fat. It's not the worst oil. Just a fun fact. It's not a horrible decision. But it still is not animal fat, which is what we evolved on primarily. My Richards with oil on top. This is real peanut butter right here. See that? Yeah, and peanuts contain an exorbitant amount of lectins and oxalates. Lectins utilize molecular mimicry on the domestic cells of the body to effectuate your own immune response on your domestic cells of the body that it is mimicking, or that they are mimicking. Direct cause of autoimmunity and heart disease, actually. Oxalates, same sort of thing. It's really oxalic acid that's contained within plants, and then whenever you consume them, they bind to particularly calcium, magnesium, and zinc, and therefore form a salt, biochemically speaking, or just chemically speaking, and that's when they form oxalates and then they crystallize to form raphides. I'll show a picture up on the screen right now of what raphides look like. And they're smaller than your cell membranes and can therefore and will therefore obliterate them upon impact. This can happen to every single cell in the body, including the epithelial cells that line your arteries and to a lesser extent your veins, therefore causing inflammation. And inflammation is the underpinning cause of heart disease in basically every single major killer in the entire Western world. You get this from plants, Joshua. That's real. This is just hydrogenated oil and sugar. You have 30 different flavors. Okay, what was the oil that was sitting on top of the peanut butter that you just pointed to first? Primarily polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are inherently inflammatory biochemically speaking because they interact with the cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase enzymes to produce three pro-inflammatory compounds in particular. They're vasoconstrictors, they're blood thickeners, really they have a higher propensity to cause the blood to clot, and they initiate acute inflammation choose from. It's kind of like a game. Green means go, yellow means caution, red means no. And pistachios are really good. And you see the progressive increase in ingredients right here. It's just going up. So try yourself some salmon, some coconut oil, some asparagus, some turmeric. Don't do that. Turmeric. There you go. Well, there's curcumin in turmeric, which is the primary polyphenol found within turmeric. That's why turmeric is touted to be beneficial in the first place. And curcumin has been shown to cause DNA damage in the gastric mucosa of human beings because polyphenols are antioxidants, but only antioxidants for the plant. They're actually pro-oxidants for human beings. We have disparate operating systems. The only reason why we have a glutathione status that rises after consuming plant antioxidants is because of the fact that our body has to upregulate its own antioxidants antioxidant status endogenously to counteract the pro-oxidative effects of the antioxidants from plants, which are, once again, pro-oxidants to human beings. If they were functioning as antioxidants within us, why would our body have to upregulate its own antioxidant status? That doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? Garlic, some lemon, and some sea or... No. Plants. Eat red meat. Ruminant meat, primarily, if not exclusively. Pistachios and yogurt. A lot of people are gonna... No, absolutely not. A lot of say about milk, but you have your casein A1 proteins, and casein A1 and casein A2 is to the point where now there's a brand of A2. So instead of those, 
I shifted over to these maybe oat milks. Wow. Joshua, if we didn't know that you were lost already, now we definitely know. Oat milk is seed oil juice. It's seed oils, water, and some oats, basically. Holy sh**. Holy f***ing sh**. Amazing. Yeah, what you're referring to is casein A1, which breaks down into beta casein Morphine is in the name. That's why casein A1 dairy is so addictive and why Americans want to put cheese on everything. But also, even without the morphine thing, it actually functions as a lectin in and of itself, which is why a lot of people think they're lactose intolerant when in fact they're actually just casein A1 tolerant. Casein A2 is the protein that cows originally produced. It's just during humans' external breeding of cows and domestication of cows, we tried to breed them into cows that produce more milk more often, and that yield yielded an A1 cow. And now they're in the most predominant cow for the reasons that I just laid out. You can still get A2 cows and therefore A2 milk, but it's more expensive because it's rarer. It's unfortunate. But anyway, let's continue, I guess. Sort of like people say soy is bad. Do the research on soy. Come to your own conclusions. But soy is absolutely horrible for you. First of all, the protein in soy is not even anabolically utilized or of utility. It's not utilitarian, really, at all. It has a little under 14% anabolic usage in human beings. We could determine how effective a protein is at muscle protein synthesis or muscle repair by determining and by assessing the amount of nitrogen-containing catabolic byproducts in urine and fecal matter as compared to the amount of nitrogen consumed as protein within that same time period. And whenever you do that, you find that soy and broccoli protein, those vegetable proteins have an anabolic utility and anabolic absorption rate of just under 14%. Whey protein, by the way, is 18% on average. So, womp womp. Eggs are the best, just ahead of beef. What do you know? I'm taking the 30 calorie almond milk because there's no calories within almond milk. I'm sorry, Joshua. Calories are the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water around a closed thermodynamic system, also known as a bomb perimeter by one degree Celsius. They're units of heat energy to be informal. They're photons. They have a rest mass of zero. They go directly through the body because the human body does not absorb energy. Energy is involved in the metabolic processes of the human body, very ephemerally to be fair. It's the entire reason why we have body heat, but we don't consume calories. False. End of discussion. There are no calories within any food, and every single person's calorie intake on a daily basis necessarily is zero calories. I don't want to drink cow's milk anymore, and that was the thing that was easiest for me to translate. I used to be a big consumer of this. Why do you cut early? Is that some sort of modern behavior? What is that about? Play stuff until I was like, yeah, cornstarch, modified food starch in here. This is just low quality. So I swapped. It. So is the almond milk and the soy milk. <laughs> Holy shit. Oikos and Chobani. And if you're looking- Okay, I mean, dairy is technically still a contraindication in the human diet, just not nearly as much as plants are. And I know within the carnivore space, I might get some pushback on that, maybe some animosity, but we didn't evolve eating that. We've eaten dairy for the exact same amount of time that we've eaten plants in any significant amount. In fact, actually, we've been eating plants, even in small amounts, longer than we've been eating dairy, if you didn't know that. Or sugar, too good. If vegetables make you gag as much as they made me gag, start with your rice vegetables. Like that one. Or just don't eat them. That's easy. Because not only are they unnecessary, they're actually, once again, insalubrious. And also, every single vegetable that you've pointed to, every single fruit, human invention. If you didn't know that. And also, I'm talking to the viewers as well, but in a far more benign way, in an amiable, cordial way. If you didn't know that, yes, all of them, 99%, are human inventions. And if they're not human inventions, they've definitely been hybridized to be bigger and sweeter. Is three different kinds of cauliflower. And the other option to that is a tub of ice cream. You know, go big or go home. And, you know, you just... Well, that isn't the other option. What are you talking about? Can't eat certain stuff anymore. Adult children of emotionally immature parents, anybody? I ate those all... The number one thing that would burn your mouth. Okay. Finish the video. All the... All the what? Is those. I definitely used to be an alcoholic. Was a massive contributor to the medications that I was on, most likely. Alcohol? Say goodbye if you're really- Notice the fact you've cut out all of that processed, ultra-processed garbage and the alcohol resulted in an amelioration of certain health conditions. Notice how you're reducing it though to fiber. Once again, ridiculous. Interested in a healthier life. I would drink maybe like five of these a night and then I just adapted to water. It's not as good as a monster energy drink. I went from eating a- You're giving some pretentious vibes here and I know that I give those off as well, but mine's a little different, I'd like to think. Of these a day. It's, it's, it's giving sanctimony. All potato chips in general are just meh. But when you're looking at them, just do the simple thing. Flip on the back and say popcorn, olive oil, and salt. Or coconut oil in this place, and salt. Alright, so don't eat popcorn because that's corn and that's a plant and they contain lectins. And fiber as well. Insoluble fiber. Arguably the worst kind. This is way better than 
these that literally have antimicrobial ingredients and in foods that are banned or ingredients that are banned in other countries. So back true. Yes. So once again, that has nothing to do with fiber though. But the brain cell challenge, reducing the number of ingredients, reducing the number of interactions in your gut microbiome health leads to an improvement. No, you don't know about gut microbiome health. I do. Your gut microbiome will adjust to the diet that you are on. That's how it works. This was proven whenever we were assessing, whenever scientists were assessing, I keep saying we, I'm not a scientist, not yet. Whenever they were assessing TMAO behavior in the gut, really TMA behavior, it's clear. Do your research between dark, medium, and light. Most medium is going to be what you're going to see, but... Don't drink coffee at all. Contrary to popular belief, it's really low in oxalates, but it's very high in polyphenols. That's why it's bitter. It's really simple. When it comes to caffeine, there's a CYP1A2. Oh yeah, not to mention the caffeine. A drug. A vasoconstrictor. Variant. Notice how all drugs come from plants. Caffeine comes from coffee. Well, other plants as well, but coffee beans have a lot of it. Nicotine, marijuana, cannabis. Really, we're talking about THC there, though. Also CBD, though, but THC is the one that is the mind-altering element. Alcohol, cocaine, heroin, they all come from plants. It's almost like they're biochemical engineers. Responsible for metabolizing this, stay under 200 milligrams if you're doing your whole coffee, and don't consume it as soon as you wake up. Because if you're consuming it as soon as you wake up, you're creating a feedback loop where you're tired, your brain isn't awake, and it's coding receptors that make you sleepy. And then you're Well, it'd be easier to just not drink it then, huh? Or just to get decaf. That's what I do. I don't drink coffee every day. But if I do, it's iced coffee, and it has no caffeine in it. They awake when you're not really I used to consume a Look whole... Look at that. What, what was that? What was that? ...box of these, and now I don't eat them anymore. Before I understood water filtering, I would start going for, like, spring or distill... I was still... Springer to sti... Springer to sti... Actually, what you can do is you can just check out my links in the description about Kangen water, or you can check out my video that I've done on Kangen water to learn more about it, because that is actually the best water that really you're gonna get. The best water you're gonna get. And no, it's not salubrious due to its alkalinity. Anagic, unfortunately, is very bad at advertising the water, which is why it's been known to be fraudulent, or deemed fraudulent, whenever you do your reviewing of the machine and what it does. It is life-changing, and is also infused with molecular hydrogen ions, which mimic the effects when consumed of grounding. If you have no access to a grounding mat or the bare earth, you can mimic the exact same effect by drinking that water. Please check out more information on that below. 100% addicted to sugar. So I started removing high fructose corn syrup from what I was eating. But you didn't replace it with anything good. You replaced it with carbohydrates, which all break down to glucose. Good job. Like Chips Ahoy Chewy, fructose, cornstarch, caramel kellers. Fructose. Once again, the stuff that you eat, especially that fruit that you were referring to and pointing towards, well, guess what the primary sugar is in that? Fructose. Then you have your bioengineered food ingredient versus your non-bioengineered food ingredients. And you can do your own research. And you know, a lot of the companies that are fans of bioengineered food and especially bioengineered meat are the ones that promote fiber. Joshua. Whatever you want here. But like breakfast is the most important meal of the day for breakfast is the most important meal of the day was an idea invented by James Caleb Jackson and John Harvey Kellogg in the 19th century to promote their newly invented breakfast cereal, cornflakes, which if you didn't know, John Harvey Kellogg created cornflakes for the sole purpose of reducing libido sex drive in his patients. Those patients being people that presented with a proclivity to masturbate. Since he was a seventh day Adventist, he was not a fan of that. So what he did was he tried to create a food that reduced their libido, and it typically actually worked, but it didn't work enough, so what he did was he just resorted to circumcision of males and females, by the way. Yes, you can circumcise a female by actually cutting the clitoris, basically effectively off, and then putting carbonic acid on the area in which it was removed from to kill any extant tissue. Good man. People of the older generation. Limited edition because it's Valentine's Day, but still just junk. Your vegetables. Yeah, it's junk also because the first ingredient is whole grain flour, I think. I think it's that whole grain flour there. There's your problem. One of the biggest ones right there. Because guess what that brings down to? Sugar! It tastes bad and all these single ingredient foods are not going to taste good, so get acclimated with spices you like and have fun. I started learning that nuts and seeds had... If you have to do that, it may be an indicator that it's food that you shouldn't be eating and it actually isn't food at all, really. Because spices are also plants. Got to be careful with those, therefore. Valuable I, mean, I mean, what do you think makes some spices spicy? That's capsaicin, a lectin. It is designed by the plant to discourage predators from eating it. And instead, what do we do? We eat it anyway. What the hell is wrong with us? From a if you can stop the phlegm response from consuming bad oils, that's... What happens whenever you consume capsaicin? What do you get? A runny nose, maybe? A phlegmy throat? 
be a thumbs up. You can beat the battle of high fructose corn syrup with maybe some maple syrup. That's Are you out of your f This is This is what we're dealing with. This is the stupidity that we're dealing with. What is maple syrup primarily constituted of? What sugar? What is the ratio of glucose and fructose in maple syrup as compared to high fructose corn syrup? Joshua, it's negligible. That's what it is. As compared, the difference is negligible. You can celebrate your birthday with healthy food. But I started cooking with coconut oils. Out of Cook with butter, tallow, lard, suet, ghee. What we evolved on. Oil. And I Avocado oil. No, you're, you've been fooled. You've been had, Joshua. That stuff is cut with seed oils in order to make it cheaper to manufacture. Come on. Not to mention, avocado oil is still primarily, as well as olive oil, monounsaturated. And it still has its second constituent being polyunsaturated fatty acid in the form of primarily linoleic acid. So... God. Your brain function is going to go through the roof when you do these things. No, not necessarily. It will probably improve, yes, because you're cutting out a bunch of other stuff like hydrogenated seed oils and food additives. And fructose, actually, it seems, because most of those products that he's been pointing to but he is touting to be bad have sucrose as the primary sugar that's added to it, which is half fructose. The beans that he's eating, there's no fructose in it, and the carbs that are in it are converted into glucose, which is still not good, but it's not fructose. So that's also better. There are many reasons as to why you'll actually see some improvement, or may genuinely see improvement, but it's reductionism to say that it's due to fiber. Sorry. Like, the way that I describe it is, when I didn't eat for three days, it felt like the first time I ever was actually thinking my own thoughts. Like, I felt on top of the world. It's called fasting. Autophagy. Also, around 50 hours, I believe your growth hormone levels peak to up to 2,000% more. Five times one's baseline level. That can help as well, so... And if addiction runs in your family, be careful when you fast. But here's stuff I didn't know. Smoke points on oils, right? When you're cooking food and it's smoking in the pan, that's bad. That's good. Right there, 500 degrees Fahrenheit, boom. Quality. Okay. <laughs> Animal fat also has a high smoke point. But also, guess what else has a high smoke point? Grapeseed oil. And grapeseed oil's omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is somewhere between 600 to 1 to 800 to 1. So it's not good to just look at smoke point. Joshua. Your thoughts are based on the quality of the foods because you are what you eat. And if you mind your gut, your mind. You can choose a banana, which is going to have potassium, dietary fiber. It's going to raise your sugar a little. Or you can choose... Oh, it's going to raise your sugar a little bit. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. That's not good, is it? Also, it has fiber. Oh, not good, is it? Also, oh yeah, it has potassium? Really? Avocados have more potassium than bananas, first of all. But also, you know what else has potassium in it? Meat. Red ruminant meat. It has every single nutrient in sufficient adequate amounts for human beings. If it didn't, I'd be dead. Avocado, if you have a CD36 gene variant, you're going to enjoy the taste of avocados, which has more potassium, more dietary fiber, polo, and monosaturated fats. And not good monounsaturated, not good polyunsaturated, really. Monounsaturated animal fats, well, that's what we evolved on. Different story. Fats from plants are a little different. Polyunsaturated fatty acids, definitely not good. Fiber, the fact that it has more of it, even worse. So it does not raise your blood sugar. You hate water? That's not necessarily the case, actually. Because I just talked about how fiber ferments into lactate and acetate, which can indirectly lead to an increased level of blood glucose. Did too. Lemon and lime. Of course, it's horrible. Oxalates, also extreme amounts of vitamin C concentration, which is not good, actually. Vitamin C is good, of course, it's a vitamin. It's essential, it's not only good, it's essential. Excess vitamin C is not good, it's not simply excreted. It is excreted, but it goes through a conversion process first. What is excess vitamin C converted into in the body via allosteric inhibition? Hmm, oh, oxalates. Quercetin used to be much higher in apples, and now most people just supplement for it. And quercetin is a polyphenol. We just covered polyphenols and plant antioxidants already, haven't we? There's quercetin found in onions. It's teeming with quercetin. You've got genistein and soy and curcumin and turmeric and resveratrol and red wine. All of them are toxic. Sorry! I and avocados, that one's gonna take forever to get ripe. Just get and eat it. Yeah, when, you buy them, right when it comes to your berries, your blueberry has the most... What was that? Your blueberry has the most research. Your strawberry, which is not here. These ones cause the lowest blood sugar spike. But direct no, you're referring to the GI scale, and the GI scale was nonsense because of the fact that you cannot establish unequivocally what someone's blood sugar response is going to be to one food, even one person's blood sugar response to the same food. Because that depends on how much sleep the person got the night prior, that depends on their activity level that day. Ridiculous. It's an association, and it's a vapid one at that. After you exercise, these travel your GLUT5 receptors, which are quickly absorbed fuel, which is fructose. For the asparagus with the fructose. 
fructose is toxic. It's seven to 10 times more glycating than glucose is, and so is galactose. It's also immediately transmuted into fat at the liver. It's a direct cause of NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, consequently. It has the same metabolites and is broken down the same as fucking ethanol, drinking alcohol. Meal, just touch the heads on the asparagus and how firm it is, is how long it's gonna last in your refrigerator. When you're buying your vegetables, you want- Our refrigerator? All the way also, through. hey, I'm not buying vegetables. Sorry, Joshua. I'm not doing that. Sellers color all the way through. Carrots are color all the way through. Broccoli's color all the way through. You might not like beets until you try them. They're basically like a potato. Then when you get over your potato choices, these are not colorful all the way through. And your sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes are colorful all the way through. So where so you could taste, taste the, the rainbow, rainbow or eat the There's no requirement for the rainbow in the human diet. There's no requirement for color. Tell me how many colors I need to eat on a daily basis to maintain my health status, Joshua. How many colors do I need to eat? Seven? You start to recognize that everything is colorful because evolutionary perspectives, color for humans means nutrient density. No, that's not what the f it means, Josh. What the hell are you talking about? It is theorized that the reason that human beings are able to see color is due to it allowing us to see ripened fruit during fruit season. Once again, an ephemeral transient season. It's theorized. It's postulated. It's purported to be the case. There's no evidence of that. That's an inference, and that's a supposedly ostensibly judicious one, but we don't know that. Yes, they utilize those in order to stimulate our dopamine receptors and stimulate our appetite. It does not signify to the brain nutrient density. City. Where the f did you get that from? Or with marketing, lack thereof. So you can still have what you love, chicken noodles. I guarantee you, when you make it naturally, you're not putting all of this in it. This stuff is garbage for your gut. And if you do not mind- I, I tend to believe that. Great. Gut, you will not keep your mind. You can look at research behind diabetes and dementia. You don't know how to interpret research. Also, you just wanted to refer to evolution earlier. If you knew anything about evolution, you would understand that for four and a half million years, we've eaten primarily the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals. We evolved on fat. Look at research behind insulin growth factor. You don't know what that is. Insulin-like growth factor one and insulin-like growth factor two and insulin. Do you know how those work in conjunction with one another? I have a better idea of that than you do, Josh. Guarantee it. You're looking at vapid associations from epidemiology and from potentially interventional trials, which usually have poor statistical power due to their sample size, are completely uncontrolled, and also are very poorly randomized. You don't know science. Develop neurodegenerative diseases as they age. Look into your omega-6, 3, and 9 fatty acids. There's some doctors out there that'll say, oh, your kid has ADHD? Okay. Let's supplement him these foods, and then problem solved. I was the lab rat, eating all of this stuff. It's all designed off of pure manipulation, 100%. So is the fibrous food. So are the books that you're reading. Sorry, Josh, you've just been indoctrinated into another ideology. One could debate whether that one is better than the other. I'm not here to dispute that or adjudicate, but... <sighs> they're both not optimal. Suboptimal. Manipulating you. It will cause problems in your life. So if you're waking up tired, you have anxiety, you might feel depressed, you can't sleep, you're constantly hungry, you can't focus, and you know there's more to this life. If you don't have the option to spend $300 a week on groceries, start somewhere. And that's with decreasing the amount of ingredients that you consume. Follow for more. I'm not going to follow. Sorry, Josh. It's not the worst video I've ever reacted to. You might have seen that I'm a little more tepid, ostensibly, and placid here and apathetic. It's just because that wasn't the worst video. It wasn't full of complete nonsense, but a lot of that, yeah, not good stuff. What you should be doing is eating a species-appropriate, species-specific diet for human beings, that being primarily the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals, and added fat in the forms of butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee, saturated fat, added salt to taste, and water. That's what you should be eating. Transition appropriately and prudently, not impetuously and cursorily. You should be embarking upon that journey over the course of six to eight weeks, not overnight. That will potentially lead to deleterious manifestations of gut issues and gut symptomology. You do not want to take the chance of that. If you are extremely ill, then perhaps you can, but I would recommend talking to someone that really knows what they're talking about, about that and has more history with dealing with clients and stuff like that, which is not me, but I'm sure that I could refer you to some other people. But anyway, with that being said, thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like below. Please subscribe to the channel. Please comment your thoughts below and also subscribe to the Patreon. It's as cheap as $1 a month. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I have a $1 month tier, a $5 month tier, and an $8 month tier in order to gain access to one week early uploads, one extra video per week, uncensored content, unblurred content with respect to the pop-ups on the screen, and also ad-free content as well. I do need to have an incentive to put in up to 50 hours a week doing this content and 
I also need to make a living. Please refer to the link on the screen below, the Cerule link. Please check that out. If you want more details as to what those products are, please refer to the Cerule video that I have made. I will put that on the screen now. I'll put the thumbnail on the screen now. That is extremely important. Any of you that are above the age of 18 should be taking that product because there's no reason why you shouldn't. If you have the money, you should definitely invest in that. I take it every single day. So by my book, Contraindicated, when it is released, we are aiming for March 1st, which is right around the corner. Closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that are perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. I think a lot of people will benefit from the knowledge within that book. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or X, and TikTok as well. Those links are in the description below. And if you have any other further questions or recommendations as to what I should react to, please email me at edgoki14 at gmail.com. I'll try to answer those as fast as possible. And with that being said, I will see you next time when we react to someone else that doesn't understand what they're talking about in any respect at all. Human nutrition, science, scientific interpretation, statistical interpretation, biochemistry, human physiology, anatomy, paleoanthropology, etc, etc, etc. So, till then.